So thank you to everyone for coming, and thank you to Leah Goldman for once again organizing this uh, this year, the class. Tonight's class, the title is Shofar, the um, Conquest of Good Over Evil. So usually Wednesday nights we study Derech Hashem by the Ramchal, Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzato. Derech Hashem is a book which basically describes in detail the basic beliefs of Judaism, and um, starting from the most basic ideas of why... There's a truck going by in Mammoth Heights, Manalapan at 9.30, and for those of you who live here, Mark, we know how rare that is. Sorry about that. But um, the book starts from what's the purpose of the world? Why did God create the world? What's the purpose of a Jew? What are the meaning of the different, different commandments? So the week before Rosh Hashanah, we thought it would be good to skip to that part and learn a little bit about the shofar. What's the idea behind the shofar? So usually what we do is we read the book inside, so I thought today we would read some of inside the text of what he describes the shofar is, and then speak about what the Ramchal says in other places about the shofar, and if we have time, maybe talk about other customs related to Rosh Hashanah, like Tashlich. Right? Why do we go to a river and empty out our pockets? What is that all about? How does that help to erase all of our sins? So if you have um, Derech Hashem, this is part four. Uh, chapter 8 and number 4, and we use the name in addition, which is very, very great, and we're on page 653. And if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and ask, and if you're shy, you can always use the chat thing here and send me a text privately. Okay. Ach, inyan ha-shofar b'rosh hashanahu, ki hine. The topic of shofar is, v'yom zeh ha-kadosh, ha-kadosh baruch hu danes kola olam kulo. On the day of Rosh Hashanah, God judges the entire world. And he recreates all of existence. The new year. On that day of Rosh Hashanah, all of the heavenly courts judge all of humanity. Now, it's interesting, people often mistake, they think that only Jews are judged on Rosh Hashanah, but that's incorrect. All of humanity is judged on Rosh Hashanah. And also, it's a discussion why specifically on Rosh Hashanah, when God created man, um, when we commemorate that event, why is that the day when we're judged, and what does that have to do with the davening of Rosh Hashanah? And if we have time, we can uh, we can talk about that. Like we mentioned in the second section. And the prosecutor prosecutes against people. So the way God made the judgment... He made it that, just like we have in this world, there are courts. So in the heavenly realms also, there are courts. So there's a prosecutor and a defense attorney. So the prosecutor tries to get us in trouble, tries to get us to not have a good year, to get judged non-favorably. Vihine, Sivanu HaKadosh Baruch Hu, B'Shofar. God commanded us to blow the shofar. So, V'hakavana bo, L'hamshech ha'anhaga berachamim, V'lo betokef hadin. The idea behind the shofar is that God should judge us with mercy and not with strict justice. And to confuse the prosecutor that he shouldn't prosecute well. So we have here a court where there is justice and we have a prosecuting attorney. And God himself commands us to blow the shofar so that God, who is the judge, will judge us favorably and will confuse the prosecutor. Just thinking of law and order, that Mr. McCoy gets all confused and can't make a case because the chauffeur is being blown. Okay, let's continue, and we're going to explain more of it. We already explained in the second section. Just like we said that strict justice won't do good for a person unless he merits it. So too is the rule of judgment. That So there's such a thing in the world as Hashem deals with us with different midas, different traits. There's midas hadin and there's midas harachem. And midas hadin means he judges us. He judges us according to the strict letter of the law. A person steals, he goes into court, he steals, he gets punished with the punishment for stealing. There's nothing that he can do to 
um, in court, right? If you go in front of the judge and tell him you had a bad day and that's why you stole something or that's why you murdered somebody, he's not going to be lenient on you because of that. So there's such a thing as strict justice. We have a concept, he quotes a Gemara here, that it says, whoever says that Hashem is a vatran, meaning that if someone says that God disregards a person's sins, then his life will be disregarded. We're not allowed to say that I did something wrong, so God's just going to forget about it. We, that, that doesn't exist. That concept doesn't exist. And it's a very bad thing to say that, uh, to the point where a person's life will be disregarded. Why? Because God made the world with reward and punishment. And if we do something good, we have to get rewarded. And if we do something bad, we get punished. Right? People often say, oh, God will understand. Uh, I'm a good person. God will understand. Well, God gave us a Torah and told us to do certain things. So if for sure we're going to make mistakes, but God just doesn't ignore the bad things that we did. Now that sounds very intense and very horrible and a very difficult way to live. So that's not the whole picture. The whole picture is there's something called Midas Harachamim, that within the system of justice, God deals with us in a merciful way when we do certain things. So it's not that God ignores his strict justice. It's not like you walk into the court and you did X, Y, Z, and the judge says, oh, uh, we're close today, forget about it. I'm, I'm just going to forget about what you did, you know, go on. That's not what Hashem does. But rather, within the court system, when we're in court, there are certain things that we can do that will God will treat us with mercy. And what, what is that? He's going to give some examples. Like the rabbi said, Someone who overlooks, he says, his own nature, his sins will be overlooked. Meaning if someone wrongs you, someone did something wrong to you, and you ignore it, you just say, you know what, forget about it, and you don't hold a grudge against them, since you judge that person like that, that's how Hashem will judge you. Hashem will overlook those negative things that you did, just like you overlooked that other person. So built into God's system of justice is that Hashem will treat you mercifully when you treat others mercifully. That's one thing. Because it's measure for measure. Just like you treated somebody else who wronged you, God will treat you like that. And then we see that Hashem is dealing with us with mercy, and this is an act, and this is within the mida, God's attribute of justice. So again, it's not like God if, is just ignoring the sins that we did and saying, you know, you don't have to come into court today. Don't worry about it. No, he's judging us for what we did wrong, but we did a sin, and God says, well, he did a sin, but you know, when, when this other person did this horrible thing to him, he just totally ignored him. So you know what? I have to be, I will now be lenient with this person who sinned against me. That's what Hashem says. But that's within the Mida of justice. God doesn't ignore justice, but within justice, he's merciful. Another example is the 13 attributes of of Hashem's mercy, right? Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum V'chanum, Erech Apayim, that we say during Slichos, and we say many, many times in Yom Kippur. When we recite Hashem's attributes of mercy, He deals with us within the Midah of Mishpat, in the Midah of Justice, in a merciful way. That's another, another tool that we have to invoke Hashem's mercy. And that's going to be related to Tashlich, which if we have time, we'll get to. Now, why exactly it works like that, that's, uh, He's going to mention it a little bit, but Probably not going to get into that now. So continues the Ramchal. It's not only this that works, that Hashem will treat us mercifully when we judge others favorably. Whatever Hashem decreed that will be merciful to us, will treat us with mercy, so it will be. So if Hashem said, if you do something and I will treat you with mercy, if you do that thing, I will judge you mercifully, that's the way it is, because that's what God decreed. And included in this principle is Tkiya Shofar. So Hashem said, if you blow the Shofar, I will judge you mercifully on Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, that's the way it is. Just like 
if I judge someone favorably, or not judge them favorably, if I ignore a slight that they did to me and I don't hold a grudge against them, that's how God's going to treat me. Just like if I say the Yud Gim will be the Sarachamim, God's 13 attributes of mercy, he'll treat me mercifully, so too when I blow the shofar, God will judge me mercifully. God commanded us to bring upon ourselves the Midah of Rachamim, of mercy. Right? It's amazing. It's not like God said, if you do this, you'll get... Um, you'll have a merciful judgment, and it's like we have an option. God commanded us. He commanded us that we should have. He wants to judge us mercifully, so he commanded us, blow the shofar, so I'll judge you mercifully. When we fulfill the mitzvah properly, this will be the fruit that bears from it. Continues the Ramchal. Detail of this. So now why is it specifically the shofar which will generate this attribute of mercy. It has to do with the founding principles of the shofar. And the true intent of it. Where does the shofar come from? As we know that Hashem commanded Avram to sacrifice his one son, Yitzchak, to bring him up to the mountain, um, which he wanted a son his entire life, and he was ready to do it, and he sacrificed the ram instead. So we are me'orer, we awaken that which our forefather Avraham did, l'hischazik b'schusam, so that we can strengthen in their merit, le'orer esarachamim, to strengthen mercy, u'lefayas midas hadin, and to placate the attribute of justice, u'lehagbir atov alara, and that good should triumph over evil, v'lichbos koch osara, and to squash the forces of evil, and to take away the forces of the prosecutorial angels, and that God should deal with us, not with his Midas Hadin, but with his attribute of Romamus, his attribute of exaltedness, which is a different way that Hashem deals with the world. That he should deal with us in, the, um, in his rule of oneness, and overlook sin, and this is through that mitzvah, and it also has to be that we have the repentance of the Jewish people, and all of the details and rectifications involved in the various ways. Now, also the shofar, when we, when we look at the, the uh, story with Avraham and Yitzchak, what Avraham did was he took his own will and he subjugated his own will before that of Hashem. His whole dream for his entire life was to have a son so that he could transmit the message of the one God to humanity through his children and continue that message. And he didn't have a son for his whole life. And Hashem tells him to take his son up to the mountain as a sacrifice. And what Avraham did was suppress that natural desire, the natural feeling of mercy that a father has for a son, and knowing that he would no longer be able to accomplish his mission, he subjugated all that, the whole essence of his being, and made that subordinate to the will of God. So that is the merit of Rosh Hashanah and of Avram Avinu, that Avram Avinu, our forefather, subjugated his entire will to the will of God. And that's a way that we can merit ourselves to have a good year, is by working to um, subjugate ourselves to the will of God. And that's why the shofar specifically, what the Ramchal says, we invoke what Avraham did when we blow the shofar so that it brings down the Midas Harachamim of um, mercy and that Hashem should judge us in that way. So something that the Ramchal wrote at the end here, which I just want to mention again, he discusses also in Maimar um, HaChachma, which is another sefer of the Ramchal, that blowing the shofar strengthens good and suppresses evil. So we learned in Dara Hashem that this world has a purpose, it has a destination. We're not just here that uh, living individual lives and that when we pass away we're going to get judged in a certain way, but rather all of humanity has a goal. And we learned in the, the beginning of the Sefer that when God put Adam Harishon, put Adam in the Garden of Eden, he had a certain mission and he didn't, rather he ate from the fruit. And when he ate from the fruit, not only was he banished from the Garden of Eden, but all of humanity changed. The entire world as we know it changed. It says that before Adam Arishan sinned, before Adam sinned, all of the, um, what we would call physical, is really spiritual. We wouldn't even able be able to perceive Adam before he sinned with our physical eyes. So after he sinned, evil 
and uh, good became mixed, and the forces of evil became strengthened. Now, all of human history is to get to the point of Adam before... Um, be, to get to the to get to the level of Adam before he sinned, to get to that lofty level, and that's going to come happen when Mashiach comes, and then we'll have Tchias Amesim and resurrection of the dead. So, the first step to that, which I don't think we got up to in this class of Darach Hashem, the first step to that is that when the Torah was given, because when the Jewish people observe the Torah and we serve as an example for all of humanity that God is one, that's the beginning of that rectification, and the rectification is completed when Mashiach comes. So the Ramchal points out that the shofar takes the power of good and suppresses the power of evil. And he shows that what happened at the giving of the Torah? Shofar. It says, Vahi kol shofar ma'od. The sound of the shofar was getting stronger and stronger. Why was the shofar blown in Man Torah? Because the shofar represents the strengthening of good over evil, the total rectification of the world, and we need to suppress evil to get to the point where of the Garden of Eden of Adam before he sinned, because when Adam sinned, evil gained power and became mixed with good. So the giving of the Torah, when the Jews could start following the Torah and following God's will and serving it as an example for all of humanity, that was the beginning of the rectification. Therefore, there was a shofar. Now, when Mashiach comes and the rectification is complete, what happens? It says, On that day, the book of Yeshaya says that the great shofar will be blown. So that's where we see that shofar is tied in, represents the triumph of good over evil. So that is shofar. Any, um, I think I'm just going to mention tashlich for like two minutes, and then if anyone has any questions, and uh, I can, uh, or not. So just tashlich is uh, related to what we were discussing a little bit. We go this year, it's going to be in the second day of Rosh Hashanah, we go to a river, we say some verses, and we empty our pockets. So what's the idea? What are we doing with that? So I think I mentioned earlier that... Sorry, someone just sending me a message. Got a little distracted for a second. But when we, um, we go to the river, we say these verses, which are related to the 13 Midas Harachimim, the 13 attributes of God's... Um, mercy, And we mention when we say those 13 attributes of God's mercy, that we invoke his merciful judgment upon us. That God, even though it's within the stricture of Midas HaMishpat, of justice, but nevertheless, he acts with us in mercy. So we go to the river and we say these 13 attributes, so Hashem will be merciful with us. Now, why do we go to a river? We go to a river specifically because a river covers up everything that's underneath. So, so too, we want to show that all of our sins are totally submerged and it's like they don't exist anymore. Now, what's interesting also, why do we have to go to a river? Why do we go to a physical place to, to do this? So something we learned just last week in Dara Hashem is that everything that exists in the physical world has something corresponding to it in the spiritual world. Its source of existence is really in the spiritual world, in the kohos. So we go to a river where it has this representation of covering everything to connect to that spiritual element of totally covering up all of sins. So we go to the river, which covers everything, so that all of our sins should be covered. And that corresponds to that on the spiritual level. And we say these 13 attributes of Hashem's mercy so that He should judge us in a merciful way. A similar concept, uh, not 100% related necessarily, but I think a similar concept is we have these simonim, right? Dip the apple in the honey for a sweet new year. Like, like what is that? That's going to have us, like, that's going to you know, make us have a sweet new year because we dip an apple in honey. So there's a concept that when we do something physical, we do something, when we want something to happen in the spiritual world, we have to bring it out by doing in the physical world. So we dip an apple in the honey to show that we want to have a sweet new year. We have to actually actualize it. I think the Ramban relates this to when Avram was promised all of Israel, he walked all around Israel to do a physical act to solidify what was happening in the heavens. And I think this is related to the concept that we learned last week in Darach Hashem that everything in the physical world has the source in the spiritual world. So just to summarize what we said, Hashem commands us to blow the shofar because we are being judged on Rosh Hashanah and He wants to judge us mercifully. And when we blow the shofar, He judges us mercifully. And not that He's ignoring sins that we committed, but rather within His within God's infinite wisdom and His attribute of justice, He treats us in a merciful way, just like if we would um, judge not 
if we would ignore slights committed against us, judge would judge a, God would judge us mercifully, so too here when we blow the shofar, he will also judge us mercifully. Why the shofar? Because the shofar is what represents Avram, we invoke Avraham's sacrifice that he was willing to give up everything for the service of God, and also the shofar represents the triumph of good over evil, as shown when the Torah was given there was a shofar, and when Mashiach comes, there will also be a shofar. Now I see there's some uh, some questions that were texted, so just give me a second to to read those. Uh, so I'm, I'm supposed to announce. Leia wants me to announce that there's going to be a second speaker. So um, so uh, everyone everyone's invited to stay on for the second speaker. Surprise! It's short and sweet. Rabbi Avish from Montreal. All right, great, awesome. Now there's another. So, oh, so someone asked, what if what if we don't say Hashem's 13 attributes? So we, we lose that schus. I mean, there are many, many things we can do to merit a good judgment. Obviously, tshuva is the most important, repentance, and to, uh, you know, to do that. But unfortunately, we are, uh, we are in a weird situation this year, so we do whatever we can. We do the best we can. You know, unfortunately, if we can't say the 13 um, attributes, then we can't do it. But, you know, we can still do tashlich, we can still hear the shofar. We do as much as we can. Oh, so someone asked a very good question, that this year there's no shofar on the first day because it's Shabbos. So that's a good question, meaning the rabbis, the reason that there's no shofar is because they didn't want us to violate any Torah prohibitions. If we had a blue shofar, maybe we'll come to carry it, and uh, and things like that. So someone's asking, do we lose that midas arachamim? My gut tells me no, but um, it's a very interesting question. I want to I wanna ask someone about that and, uh, and get back to you. So if you want to um, send me an email to remind remind me, I would like to look into that. But um, my gut tells me we don't lose that. Okay, any uh, any other questions? All right, great. Thank you again, Leah, uh, for organizing. Thank you to everyone else for coming. And I'm very excited for the second speaker. Thank you. Um, Rabbi Abish, you can start.